Today is Monday the 25th of July 2016. This is Krzysztopur in southeastern Poland. It's approximately 40 kilometers or thereabouts northwest of Sandomierz. And I just spent the night here. It was a very pleasant place to spend the night. Uh, the views of the castle, it wasn't illuminated uh, last night, although there are lights there. Uh, which I can see that so maybe there was a reason why it wasn't isolated to a certain extent although I could hear uh, the sounds of animals I could hear some animal outside maybe it was just a cat or a dog walking around I don't know because I couldn't see it but in the morning get all the, the noises from the farm such I even heard pigs uh, squealing this morning this castle is said to have been the largest palace because it really is a palace it's a fortified palace it dates to the beginning of the 17th century and it's said to have been the largest palace in Europe until the construction of Versailles now it's very difficult to say what makes a size of a palace because uh, do you measure this by cubic meters do you measure by square meters do you include the gardens uh, the gardens here are only approximately uh, well, there's not much of them as you'll see, 1.6 hectares, whereas Versailles it's more than 800 hectares, so that would put it into uh, the context. I mean, certainly as well, it doesn't look any bigger than, for example, Windsor Castle. Uh, if we were to take the case of Poland, I'd say that, for example, Malbor Castle is certainly bigger, but Malbor was built as a castle, not so much as a palace. As you can see, these are certainly walls which were built for defence. And you can't really get much of an impression from down here, uh, but if you see it in an aerial view or on a map, you'll get a much better idea. So let's have a walk around the castle first. And it's very much as though it's sort of lost in the countryside here. And despite its size, I don't think it's a particularly well-known castle. Okay, today is a Monday morning, so there's quite a few cars till 10 o'clock on Monday morning. And yesterday was Sunday, and uh, it's a bit difficult for me to park. Easy with a car, but with a van. There's uh, many places that we can't actually use. The weather, it's 28 degrees, which is normal for this time of year in Poland. I'd like to also to point out, even walking down here, it is absolutely well out in the countryside, but you can see there is a cycle path. And the Greenways system has been very well developed in eastern Poland. And so you, uh, you can travel by bicycle. I was at a press conference and this is what the plan was said, but I think it's now been actually done from the northern Russian border to the Slovakian uh, border. Maybe there's a bit of an exaggeration on that, but there you go. Cycle path out here in what can almost be described as just about the middle of nowhere. With all due respect to everybody living around here, of course. Now, uh, I'll be going later, today or tomorrow, to Opatu, which I've only driven past before, but it's sort of, I've been meaning to go there now for a very long time, ever since reading Samuel Willenberg's book, Revolt in Treblinka, which I first read about 23 years ago. Now, the village here is called Uyazd, and the castle was founded by one uh, Krzysztof Osolinski. Now, I was also in a place called Klimontov. Now, somebody in his family founded the church there and the monastery there. And you can see that in another film. I was there yesterday. In fact, I spent the weekend there. Uh, 
and it was built in stages over a almost a 30 year period thing is it's in this state of disrepair because there was the Swedish invasions of the, the in the middle of the 17th century so it had only just been finished by the time that got destroyed and then it was once again uh, seriously damaged in the uh, 1772 uh, war or sort of a civil war really in Poland uh, but also there was the, you know, the intervention in this case of Russia uh, on one of the sides within the civil war and that led to the state it's in now. Now there's been several attempts actually to do it up and it has, there are repairs uh, which, which occurred. The most recent of which was uh, not that long ago, it was in 1981 and turn it into a site for officers. So the officers would come here, have a bit of rest and recreation, but when martial law occurred, that plan was shelved and since then nothing else has happened. Uh, here we have a uh, grave or a place to, to recall where people were murdered in 1944. So there we have the date, June 1944, 10 Poles were murdered on this spot. June 1944, this area was liberated, well liberated, fell into Soviet hands, changed occupant a few weeks after that killing took place. And we get these signs all over Poland recalling what happened during the occupation. And I, I did a film yesterday on Klimontu where um, I explain why the population is one third what it was a hundred years ago. So we have this round tower, but below it, what appears to be some type of summer house with this water feature outside. So the, it's, it's illogical. If this is for defense, then uh, you understand the high walls, high thick walls are low. By the time it was built, uh, such uh, walls were becoming a bit out of date, particularly if they're going straight up, if they were sort of sloped at an angle, it was a bit different. But outside, there's these facilities here for enjoying oneself in summer. So it is a little bit illogical. But that must have been what Mr. Ossolinsky wanted. So let's have some statistics on this. The castle itself takes up 70,000 cubic uh, meters. It's on a 1.3 hectare site, 600 meters circumference of the walls. And the walls themselves are 3,730 square meters. The gardens, so where I'm standing now, 1.6 hectares, and uh, constructed something of the order of over 12,000 tons of sandstone and other materials were needed. Now, it was said to be uh, so luxurious inside that even the horses would drink from marble troughs and uh, used a great deal of marble, alabaster, and uh, wood, uh, which didn't come from here, exotic wood. And so this more or less completes the tour around the outside of the castle, because my van is now parked up there on the left. So let's have a look at it from the inside.
It's the date 1631. Very similar time to when the, the large church and the abbey were made. Clemontov, not so far from here. Which also happened at the beginning of the 17th century. And the W it was the Mr. Stalinsky who did this place was rather superstitious and that has some kind of magical or superstitious significance. This whole palace has been built around a calendar motif so it's got what we'd call today I suppose 12 suites 52 rooms 365 windows now Mr. Osolinski died one year after this was completed and from there to the moment of its destruction in by the Swedes it was only around what 11 years something like that perhaps it's just as well you didn't live long enough to see it destroyed his son died in the Yelnitsky uprising which was in the Ukraine and he, his son died childless. Whereas I appreciate that this was built largely privately, Mr. Osolinsky, Christoph Osolinsky, he was the uh, voivoda of uh, Sandomierz, so much of this money must have come from public funding, as such as it existed in the 17th century. I can imagine what good could have been done if the resources used to make this 11 year lasting uh, castle. Uh, could have been put into public uh, projects such as housing, which of course didn't really exist then, uh, or um, roads, or infrastructure, give them supplying water, where we would be today in terms of human development. And I'll just use this as one example because you've got examples throughout the world when the powers that be built castles and magnificent palaces and churches and did nothing for uh, people. The end. I think I'll walk around the easy route. So that's where I've come out if I follow the underground passage. Now, this is the official route. 
but you know it's not going to be suitable for all the people. Are those with physical difficulties? Having said that, it is a ruined castle. What does one expect? And the price of tens of what you're getting, you can't expect too much, I suppose. This is the round tower, which we saw from outside. And on the other side is the summer house. And it says that this is the way to the spring. Use the word right? well spree. Which in English doesn't make much sense, but in Polish as it is the word it does. This may have been the back entrance once, if so, that would have been the way to the summer house. But uh, not much good in the case of a siege. Another warning is that the floor is pretty slippy in here. In many ways, it's like when you go into a, a ruin, which is uh, a wild ruin. Uh, I do appreciate that this has been a tourist attraction only for a relatively short time, and that there's huge amounts of work to be done here possibly building walkways and what have you, and the money for that is not available. I absolutely appreciate that. a bit of an idea of the shape of the fortifications. We've also got a ditch here, which is very clear, but not a ditch at the bottom.
and that's where I spent the night. So now I'm going to move on. I'll say of the experience I had here, perhaps the most interesting as she was stopping the night here. This is a very nice place to stop. Now I am going to move on to our paddles. I say that around here is some good cycling. Not so other people are doing that. <laughs> So, if you're interested in more of these films, see my site www.motorhomefulltime.com or YouTube site.